Okay guys, this is DCS World with the 18C module. My name is Lindemann and this is a learning resource for starting the 18C uh, Thunderbolt 2, or commonly known as the Warthog. There's many videos like this, but this one is mine. Uh, the objective of this is to get you familiar with a basic procedure to start the Warthog. I'll uh, continue the series on, so uh, we'll be covering other steps, and I hope to put this together into a, uh, a bit of a curriculum for you to step through on your way to learn the ATNC. Uh, it is a fairly complex aircraft to fully learn, so uh, read the manual, um, ask questions. If you see anything which I do which is wrong, feel free to comment. If you have any suggestions, uh, do the same. Or if you just want to say hi, then uh, feel free to, to comment away. Um, so the first thing we're going to do in generally starting just about any aircraft is provide electrical power. So we do that over here with the battery switch. So I'll flick that on. Uh, battery's forwarded on and you'll see some uh, warning lights come to life. The next thing that we're going to do is switch on the inverter to provide power to many systems including uh, the APU, which is what we're going to turn on next over here. Now I've got the 18 uh, Warthog Hotas joystick and throttle. So I can actually flick this in real life. You'll see if I press that in my joystick it flicks like so. It's important before you start if you do have one to reset all of your switches to the correct position so that um, it's in sync with the game. Uh, the next thing we want to do is monitor the APU which is here for the exhaust gas temperature and here for the RPM. So that's ticking up to 100 RPM, 100% and we'll press this button just here to test all of our caution and warning lights come up. The reason we do that is that we want to know if there's a fire. Uh, if, the, if the bulb is blowing and something is going horribly wrong, uh, we want to make sure that all of our systems work, including that one there, which illuminates the fire alarms. Okay, so we've got 100% RPM uh, as seen there. We're ready to provide electrical power via the APU generator. So I will um, do that just after this one here, which is the oxygen flow test. And you'll see the alarms correctly sounded as we flow past uh, zero oxygen. Alright, so providing electrical power with the APU generator, you'll see the, uh, the horizontal situation indicator has kicked in and uh, aligned to our orientation via the compass. Uh, up next we will tune the radios. Now I'm going to do this from memory, but this one here is our main VHF radio and I'm pretty sure it is 131 megahertz that we are after. 131, so that says uh, 12 and that was on 4 originally. I've right clicked to change that to a 13, left clicked to change that to a 1, so it now reads, uh, one minute I can zoom in, now it reads 130 one decimal zero double zero so we've tuned the radio if you ever want to know how to tune or what frequency to tune to press f10 you can see this is my aircraft here left click on the airfield you're interested in you'll see it down the bottom 131 megahertz for batumi airfield excellent so we've got that tuned in the next thing to do is to give power to the radio that is done with this dial here changing it from off to TR. So there's a TR just here and I'll set it to that. So okay up next on the list we'll get the uh, external lights turned on. So this is done with the uh, key control P to set the master light switch which is on the side of the throttle to on. We'll then turn on uh, some position flash, anti-collision, nose illumination and I'll get some lights on in here. Now if you start a mission and it's too dark to really uh, navigate your way around the cockpit there is also a, an emergency light that you can flick on which gives you some flood lighting uh, that will work even in a cold dark cockpit. So as long as you can see that switch there, emergency flood, uh, you can then use that to um, 
get the aircraft started to the point where you can get the rest of the lights on. Okay, so we're going to get uh, permission here to start the aircraft. Uh, so we'll press mic switch forward on my HOTAS and that equates to the, uh, the slash key on the keyboard. Uh, I'm going to select F5 for air traffic control. The list of air traffic controls is uh, in order of distance. So Batumi is first in the list because we are at Batumi. So this is good if you're requesting landing. You can use this list as a bit of a cheat to see uh, where's my closest airfield that I want to land at. So um, uh, you can see that Kobaliti would be a good one to fly to because it's second on the list, so it must be the next closest airfield. So I'll select uh, Batumi and I will request start. Alright, so I've got clearance to start up. You don't need clearance to start your APU, but you do for your engines because you become a bit more of a, a hazard at that point. I've got also got my lights on. Uh, if there were ground crew, we would want to uh, let people know that we are a moving object that people need to be aware of. Um, so that's why those lights are on, uh, or they would be on by that point. Okay, so I can press F12 now and get rid of that menu. Uh, we can get uh, the engines up and running. So the next thing we'll do is get the boost pumps providing fuel to the uh, engines. We'll select all four of them. For two for wings and two for the main fuselage uh, fuel tanks. Okay, so we should be fine there. The next thing that we're going to do is start the left engine. So we've got uh, dials here for the left engine, fan, uh, fuel flow, um, exhaust gas temperature, core RPM, and uh, the hydraulic power, etc. as well, that we'll also be monitoring as this goes through. Um, just checking the fuel tanks here, they both go to three, which means the fuel readout is correct. We won't close the cockpit because we're in an A10 and the uh, cool people leave the cockpit open as you taxi. Okay, so to, s to roll the uh, the engine forward, if I were to move my throttle, it will roll forward and that's all you need to do. If you don't have this uh, system, you'll need to be pressing the, uh, for the left engine, it would be the right alt key and page up to start the left engine. The right engine is right control and page up. Okay, so here we are monitoring the uh, the fan is slowly coming up through 20%. The exhaust gas temperature is an important one to take note. If you get a hot start in a gas turbine, you will have, uh, you can see it's just peaked and dropped, so it looks like a good start. Also the caution and warning light here is uh, illuminated for engine start cycle. And now that that has uh, turned off. That means that our start cycle is complete and we have what looks like a good start on the left engine. Excellent. So now we're ready to start the right engine. Uh, one, one other note here, we do have um, uh, hydraulic power here on the left side which uh, powers certain systems. The next thing we're going to do is exactly the same. Right the right control and page up, or for me, roll the right throttle forward past cutoff to idle. And I'm going to link my throttles together so they work now as one unit and we'll monitor our uh, RPM pressure, make sure the gas temperatures are uh, the exhaust temperature is good, or it might actually be the core temperature. And engine start cycle is illuminated. If you've ever had trouble starting an engine, one thing to note is that you can't start both engines at the same time. This light must be illuminated before, uh, sorry, must be extinguished before you start the next engine. If you get a hot start, you'll have to shut that engine down, uh, flick the engines to motor, start the engines again, and uh, no fuel will be introduced, and the motoring will basically flush it. Do that for about 10 seconds or so, then shut the engine down again, flick it from motor to back to normal where it is there, and then try again. 
so you'll have to flush out all of the fuel which has probably swamped the engine uh, or um, some people just reload their aircraft or contact um, uh, the ground crew for repairs if, if in doubt walk away right so that now we've got two good starts on the engine here we can flick on some electrical power and I'm going to do this uh, by flicking on the left and the right generator which provides electrical power from the left and right engine and then I can switch off the APU so we'll do that there you can see we get a warning because we've got the APG generator on still and at this point we can turn off the APU so it becomes a little bit more quiet now the electrical power is being provided by the main engines so um, we are good to go there Okay, so now we can start getting some systems turned on now that we've got a good start on the engine. First thing we're going to get started is the central uh, computer uh, display unit. And it's the CDU. This is this unit here, basically a little computer interface for the pilot. Uh, you can see that that goes through a built in uh, test, a startup test. And we'll turn on the EGI. EGI, CDU and EGI, commonly referred to as the EGI. The EGI is a new integrated navigation system. Uh, so it's the one to use, basically. Now, the EGI will require a bit of alignment. So we'll, uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. All right, so whereabouts are we? We are up to uh, uncaging the standby attitude indicator would be next. We'll do that here. Zooming in, you can see that we have this standby system, and I'll just bring that to the horizon now that that's uncaged. Okay, we'll enable anti skid over here, and that will uh, stop us from skidding if we were to brake too heavily on uh, an aborted takeoff or during landing. We'll also right click the lights here for our nose wheel to be taxi. So now we have a taxi light streaming up the front that you can see there. Okay, well next we'll turn on the central interface control unit. That's found down here. It's the CICU. It's basically the, uh, the junction between a whole lot of systems communications. Um, and after that we'll turn on our MFDs. So we do that with the knobs on the bottom left corner on the MFDs. I'll give it a right click to switch it straight to day. Um, there's three positions. There's also night, which I can uh, flick them to if uh, we want them to appear much less bright. Okay, so after the MFDs, we'll uh, turn on the integrated flight and fire control computer, commonly referred to here as the IFC. Um, it's got three positions, off, test, and on. So I'm going to flick it to test. Then you'll see on the HUD, if I zoom in slightly, we now have a pre-flight built-in test. Yes, that is actually a question. The answer is enter. And it will start the built-in test, including cautions and warnings and all sorts of things. Now over here I have a, uh, a Dismas alert. Uh, I'm just going to act that because we've not loaded anything for the digital stores management system which no doubt I will address further in another video. Uh, at this point uh, on the MFDs the system is uh, telling me that it wants some data. So we have the DTS system here. Uh, pull up, pull up. What we'll do is we'll load the data. The one to press is this uh, OSB, option selector, uh, for load all. And you'll see that the asterisks or the, the dots next to all of the options disappear. When they reappear in about 10 seconds or so, that means it's finished loading. Now the data cartridge holds your flight plan, it holds your weapons, it holds um, all the parameters that the aircraft needs to know about from the mission planner so it's the go-between. You can see there that the stars, or the dots, have now reappeared and if I load up 
a system, you can see that my weapons are known now. So it's automatically loaded in things like my flight plan, etc. Great. Um, we'll now flick uh, the right one to CDU. And on the CDU, it is actually repeating this screen here. The main difference is I don't have to look down. So that's what's called the CDU repeater. Makes it a bit easier to read the CDU and keep my head up and out of the cockpit. Now the built-in test for the FC is complete and I can exit that and change some other settings which I'm not going to bother to do. I'm instead just going to click this from test to on with a left click and you can see we now have what looks like a pretty normal HUD. Excellent. Okay, so going through the list, we'll, um, we'll get our stability systems turned on next. We have pitch and your switches here. So we can flick all four of them to enable those channels for stability augmentation. We'll also get uh, the trim set. Now by default, every time you load an aircraft, the trim is set correctly. So I'm doing this just to show you guys what it looks like. But if you were to take off and land, before you took off again, say you uh, refueled or got some more weapons, uh, you would want to press this button until the light comes on. So if I were to uh, trim the aircraft, you can see the, the joystick is uh, trimmed all the way nose down now you can see boom that light comes on after the trim has reset so don't try and take off and then realize that you had full uh, right wing down trim and uh, bad things happened okay the next thing to have a look here let me just check my list make sure I'm not uh, doing things in the wrong order steer point uh, we'll set our steer points uh, by default that is set to mission which uh, means that the, um, the steer points that you're using are uh, taking on mission parameters. I'm going to set that to flight plan so it's limiting my uh, waypoints in order of the flight plan which is set out. I only have the one waypoint because uh, uh, it's not loaded um, or it's not in the mission editor uh, a flight plan so I've just got that one point there, which is fine. Um, right, so the next thing we will look at is uh, have a look at the CDU. You can see here it is flashing. Now that flashing means that the INS system is fully aligned. Uh, the EGI that we turned on, it's an integrated system it needs to fully align before you move. If you do move, you'll have to realign uh, either in flight or on the ground. Uh, once that is fully aligned, the, the key to look at here is the T equals 4.0, 0 0.8. That is your rate of error, and um, that's as good as it gets. You have, you have to wait for that before moving, and then select nav mode. Now we are in nav mode. As far as the aircraft is concerned, it is uh, it is active. So before, when it, when it was in ground mode, it was um, it was aligning. Excellent. So the next thing that we need to do is actually use the EGI. So the older system here, the Haas system, is selected as our navigation uh, system, and what we want to do is select EGI like so. So you can see that illuminates. We'll um, go through steer points, etc. So we can leave all of that the same. That's important. The next thing that we want to do is enable some of the newer cool features of the autopilot. One of them being the EAC and the ground radar. Enhanced attitude control and ground radar. Now those are pretty, pretty tricky to see uh, if you don't have track IR and you're looking through here, um, you might want to, um, or you can actually click them through the throttle. Um, so they are there. Um, or set up a custom view or um, yeah, something to click that. That can be a pain. 
Okay, so ground radar and enhanced attitude control is turned on. Uh, the last thing that we really need to do um, is just really two or three things. We've got a pretty good aircraft at this point. One is switch master mode, which is M on the keyboard, or for me it is uh, the master mode uh, button on my joystick, which is where the index finger lifts up on the side of the front of the joystick, and I can switch that to nav mode um, as appropriate for taxi and takeoff. The next thing that we'll do is, generally before takeoff, we will arm the ejection seat. Typically in a, um, a ground control area like this, you, you might not arm the ejection seat at this point, but we'll do it for the sake of tutorial. It's a simple left click, like so. Now I can eject, so I've got a hot seat. Uh, the next thing that we'll want to do is press Control C or right click this button here to close the canopy. It's right here. And you can see the canopy is closing. Okay, now all caution and warning lights are extinguished. There are other things that you will do uh, in flight or just before flight, for example, setting your countermeasures system. I can do that, turn them on using the control here. Typically it's not required, obviously, for system startup. Um, so I could get this set up to counteract SAM2. I can adjust my seat. Seat to uh, too low, seat too high. All of this stuff is really superfluous though and just uh, nice to have. Um, I can also engage the, uh, the automatic uh, HUD or, or TVM recording or auto. Uh, and other things as I see fit. But at this point I'm really ready to taxi so I can contact air traffic control and request taxi to runway. Alright, so we are good to go. Um, the only thing left to do is uh, taxi, uh, pre-flight checks, final pre-flight checks, and then uh, request takeoff. So we'll end it at this point. My name's Lindemann. This is the 18C. Thanks for watching.